that was a w- part of a wonderful video that's posted on YouTube done by, actually posted by John Greenwood on Lake Sunapee and Great Island in 1936 to 1954. Thank you all for allowing us time to talk at your meeting about short-term rental properties in Sunapee, New Hampshire. As you saw from the short video, Sunapee has a rich history of tourism and rental properties. For many generations, it has been a place where people from all over the country come to enjoy the vacation assets that all of us have come to value and love. In the early 1800s, John Young Gardner, who was born on his family home on Gardner Hill, later known as Burkhaven Hill, was responsible for the transformation of Sunapee from farm and mill community to a tourist resort. John, together with his friend Albert Reynolds, built the Reynolds House, the very first Harbor Hotel. Then 10 years later, the two men played an important part in building of the Grand Ben Mir Inn on the same piece of property. In 1875, a gentleman named Lafayette Colby built the Lafayette House, which was really the very first summer hotel on Lake Sunapee in what today is known as Burkhaven Bay. There was Blodgett's Lodge and the Grand Leiden Hotel, the Sunapee Lodge. And boy, I remember this. I've been coming here since the 1960s. And there was even a casino, although I couldn't find out the name of the casino. But this was just the beginning of tourism. The first steamboat, the Lady Woodsum, began transporting summer visitors. And in 1885, it was quickly followed by the Sunapee Lake Steamboat Company, whose 87-foot boat could transport 500 passengers. Responsible tourism has been an important part of the Sun of Key community for the past 200 years. Responsible hotels, motels, bed and breakfast, and private rentals have added to the economy and attraction of this fine community. Housing is one of society's most basic needs. However, during the last several decades of national prosperity, housing has become has come to represent more than just shelter. In our town, where the predominant land use is residential, housing defines the character of the community. This committee began by reviewing the 1998 master plan to make sure that we were considering all visions for the town. Even back then, the plan noted that there were several housing-related issues facing Sunapee during the next 10 to 20 years, and that other communities throughout the region would share many of these issues. Specifically, they listed the higher cost of housing, making it difficult for younger and older segments of the population to find affordable housing. Limited housing opportunities for those who are not able to afford home ownership. The opportunities for housing are limited. There are very few apartments available and no housing specifically designed for the elderly. The old master plan recommends that the town ensures ample affordable housing opportunities, promoting safe and affordable housing for the elderly, handicapped, youth, and young families. It recommends preventing commercial and industrial use from entering predominantly residential district and further states that this would be best accomplished by a use-based zoning ordinance which would maintain the residential character of certain neighborhoods and protect such from excess noise and traffic, as well as potential health and safety issues. Now fast forward to 2010. The master plan of 2010 begins with the vision of Sunapee, stating that people value peace and quiet and lack of streetlights and the fact that they can see the stars at night. It also states that people are willing to consider some additional regulations to control development, but want those regulations to be easily understood and fairly administered to all. And I'm going to repeat this throughout the presentation. As the plan looked forward to the future, it states that the residents were committed to not only preserving the things they like, but also working to change some of the things that they're concerned about. But even back in the 1998 or 2010 master plans, when they were developed, no one could predict the effect that the rise of short-term rental properties would have on our little community. It's important to note that STRs, which I'm going to call short-term rentals, have been present for years, even decades. 
and well before Airbnb and VRBO came into the scene. Owners would advertise in newspapers, travel brochures, and relied on word-of-mouth communication to attract guests. In addition, real estate agents were, and still are, used to locate and secure some SDRs in some markets. The industry's not new. What is new are the website portals that have made it easier for people to list homes for the vacation market, increasing visibility. Things like Airbnb, Booking.com, VRBO, Expedia, Marriott Homes and Villas, Craigslist, Home Away, Relaxing Co., Breakaway Vacations, Gray Ledges, ACB Realty, Flipkey, Facebook, just to name a few. This growth of the STR market has caused many communities to take notice. In the state of New Hampshire, many communities have already added regulation to this category of accommodation, and hopefully Sunapee will follow. What we do know today is that in Sunapee, there are greater than 180 active short-term rental properties being advertised on the most common rental platforms. This does not account for private or non-advertised short-term rental properties. Platforms like Facebook, Craigslist, and a variety of others have not been included in this number. And the numbers are growing almost day by day. This slide shows you the rental property numbers by town, and it gives you an idea of the annual revenue growth rate as compared to other markets. From 2021 to 22, the growth rate in Sunapee remained relatively stable. Although the Sunapee community is struggling to define and enforce regulations that preserve the character of the community and help the communities to be safe while ensuring equity and controlled growth, we have made some progress. But thoughtful regulation and growth takes time. To begin the conversation, let's look at a few definitions so we can all be on the same page. As listed in the Sunapee Zoning Ordinances, these are the categories of lodging that are permitted in the town. Now remember, all categories can be rented as short-term rentals from 1 to 29 days or long-term rentals, which are over 30 days. We have hotels and motels, which are defined as a building or group of buildings providing sleeping accommodation for persons on a transient basis. Measles meals may be served to guests, but cooking facilities are not allowed in the individual rooms. We also have bed and breakfast, tourist homes, inns, and a category called lodging and boarding. These are owner-occupied single dwellings in which no more than 10 rooms can be used to provide transient sleeping accommodations with meals served only to guests. Now please note that hotels, motels, and bed and breakfasts and inn all have to be registered with the state of New Hampshire as commercial businesses. As businesses, they are regulated for safety issues and occupancy. The business pays taxes to both the town and the state of New Hampshire. All of these contribute economically to our town. Tourist homes, inns, and boarding and lodging have no regulation and are not required to register as commercial businesses. There is no safety, fire, or occupancy regulations for these. Now, for the purpose of this presentation and after comprehensive research, the committee is defining short-term rentals as the following. Short-term rentals, the provision of transient lodging for compensation in the primary dwelling unit for stays of between 1 and 29 consecutive nights, where the dwelling unit would be normally considered a residential living unit, not associated with regulated commercial activities such as a hotel, motel, or bed and breakfast. In our wonderful town, we have a variety of short-term rental accommodations. Some are well round, sorry, some are well run, have responsible owners on the premises, minimize their impact on on Sunapee resources and utilities, are and are in keeping with the character of the neighborhood. Others are poorly run, have absentee owners, and change the complexion of our beautiful town. The growth An unregulated nature of short-term rentals has caused a strain on the Sunapee community assets, including police, emergency services, trash removal, Dewey Beach passes, and water and sewer usage. In addition, communities have been impacted by unregulated parking, noise parties, and safety issues. 
Property values have also been impacted in both a negative and positive way. Residents abutting the STRs are likely to have a reduced property value, while home sales in the community have priced out young families and anyone wanting to rent and work in the Sunapee community, who now can't afford to rent or buy. Investment companies and private investors are buying up properties as soon as they hit the market. In late 2021, the Sunapee Short-Term Alliance was formed to assist the town of Sunapee in establishing guidelines to help regulate the growth of this growing and unregulated category of housing. The Sunapee Short-Term Alliance, abbreviated SSTRA, has been meeting and gathering information from the community for the past six months. We reached out to community members, rental management companies, STR owners, and non-STR owners for input so that all perspectives could be huge, could be heard prior to considering any options and drafting a plan. We have critically reviewed more than 50 ordinances from like towns in New Hampshire, reviewed the Sunapee master plans from both 1998 and 2010, reviewed the existing ordinances in the town of Sunapee, and incorporated existing New Hampshire laws where appropriate. And after careful consideration, we have constructed a draft ordinance for consideration by the town. We have consistently kept all of the goals and values of the Sunapee Master Plans in mind when drafting this proposed ordinance. Remember, according to the 2010 Sunapee Master Plan vision, People value peace and quiet, lack of streetlights, traffic lights, and the fact that they can see the stars at night. And people are willing to consider some additional regulation to control development, but want those regulations to be easily understood and fairly administered to all. The 2010 Master Plan listed as a goal to provide opportunities for affordable housing at all economic levels. The increase in the number of STRs in Sunapee converted or purchased for investments has caused an increase in housing prices that is nearly impossible for young families to purchase or even rent long term. Our research has shown that this lack of affordable housing has also made housing unavailable for workforce for the workforce that we need to keep our businesses in town running. Uh, people like hairdressers and wait staff and shop employees, just to name a few. Now, in addition, goal number three in the 2010 master plan also states that the goal is to ensure the housing stock is safe through enforcement of zoning ordinances and floodplain regulations. Many of the existing STRs have safety issues. Now, currently, Short-term rentals are not permitted anywhere in the town of Sunapee, yet more than 180 short-term rentals are now operating in the town, so none are currently in compliance with existing zoning regulations. Clearly, an ordinance is needed to help preserve our community. It is our hope that you'll move forward on this issue and consider our draft proposal as the first step in creating regulation that is fair and equitable for all community members. There are many responsible and safe STR operators in the town. However, if nothing is done and short-term rentals continue to be illegal and unregulated in the town of Sunapee, we will see an increase in the number of unsafe and unwelcome STRs that create nuisances for neighbors, hurt the town character, and do not contribute economically to the town. I want to leave you with some pictures of what homeowners are advertising as short-term rentals in the town of Sunapee. Something for you to think about. Here is the picture of a houseboat on Perkins Pond. As the Perkins Pond community discovered, potentially every dock on all of the lakes in Sunapee could have short-term rental houseboats attached to every dock and rented. Although not on Perkins Pond because the state of New Hampshire just passed a law prohibiting all houseboats on Perkins Pond. Here is a picture of a camper that is advertised and rented as a short-term rental. Imagine that you're the neighbor and you just purchased a, a home between $300,000 and $500,000, and then you find this in the driveway next to you. Potentially, any person with a driveway could add an STR camper. Think about what that would do for property values and the character of, of our community. This is an STR that's advertised with nine bedrooms 
The picture shows 38 Harvard University students exiting a rented bus to spend the weekend at the house for a retreat. When approached by neighbors, it was discovered that there was no person in charge who was responsible for supervision or as a contact point should there be some issues. This same STR has caused neighborhood parking problems and trash issues. Now remember, currently in the town of Sunapee, STRs are not permitted and they are unregulated. So it's just a matter of time before this community is littered with campers, houseboats, yurts, and other eyesores that could change the character of the community that we love and cherish. Thank you all for your commitment to your community, and thank you for letting us present.